Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at the Surface Laptop Go 2. This is the second iteration of a 12-inch laptop from Microsoft that I have been very fond of. And we're going to take a closer look at this new version in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this new Surface is all about. Now the price point on this one as configured is $699. They do offer educational discounts on Surface devices, and I would look into that if you have a kid in school or you're employed by an educational institution because you can save some money, and I was able to take advantage of that because I have two kids in school right now, so that was helpful. Now, there is an entry-level version of this laptop that has only 4 gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of storage. It has a very attractive price, but you're not gonna get a lot of longevity out of it. So I would suggest pay a little more and get at least the mid-range device like I've got here. This one has eight gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. The storage is upgradable, but you have to take the uh, rubber foot off of the bottom here, unscrew some stuff, and then lift up the keyboard to get at it. And these rubber feet never go back on the same way, but if you do want to upgrade the storage down the road, uh, you do have the ability to do that with an NVMe SSD. Now, all versions of this laptop come equipped with an i5-1135 G7 processor from Intel. This is a prior generation chip. All the 12th generation machines are coming out right now, but it performs exceptionally well in this package, and it resolves a lot of the graphical performance problems that I had with the prior one. And you'll see some examples of those performance improvements in a little bit. Now it's not very heavy. It comes in at just under two and a half pounds or 1.12 kilograms. It has a 12.4 inch display. It's not very high resolution though. It is 1536 by 1024. So it's kind of just a little bit more than a 720p display. But when it's in a smaller form factor like this, it's not as noticeable. However, if you are used to some of those high pixel displays on your smartphone or tablet, uh, this will look a little more jaggedy than some of those other displays that pack more pixels into a smaller space. As you can see, it is a touch display and it's running with a three by two aspect ratio, which is more of a square aspect ratio that's well suited for web browsing and document editing and that sort of thing. And it's got a nice panel of glass on it as well, a very high quality feel to this. The overall industrial design is pretty much identical to the prior edition. As you can see, it's very well balanced, so you can lift up the screen here with one hand and not have the keyboard go with you. It is mostly aluminum, so you have aluminum here on the keyboard deck, the glass on the display, along with aluminum on top. The bottom here is a mixture of aluminum and plastic. They say it's a polycarbonate aluminum resin with glass fiber mixed in. Uh, and I'm guessing that was done to keep the weight down, but overall it feels like a really nicely constructed device that has a more expensive fit and finish to it versus uh, some other laptops you might find at this price point that are mostly plastic. The keyboard isn't bad on this either. I really like this keyboard from the prior edition. It's the same on this one. The keys are a little smaller than your average notebook computer size keys, but they're well spaced. They have really nice travel to them. And I never had to really adjust to typing on this. And I've been using the prior edition pretty often over the last year or so. And it's been a very nice typing experience. Oddly, at this price point, you would expect a backlit keyboard. This does not have a backlight, which for many people might be a deal breaker. On the mid-range and the upper end models, you also get a fingerprint reader here, which doubles as the power button. The entry level version does not have that. The trackpad is also very nice. We've seen really nice trackpads on other Surface devices over the years, and this one is no exception. So it is uh, pretty much bringing everything over from the prior edition, and that was an excellent hardware uh, layout and design, and there was really nothing that needed changing. I have found the keyboard is a little less springy than it was before, so it feels a little better, but for the most part, it is the same as the prior edition. Now, as far as ports are concerned, you don't get many on this. So you have a full-size USB 3.0 connector here. 
you have a full service USB type C port here and this port will do video output so if you wanted to connect a docking station you could do that or just a monitor if you want it also takes power in so it can charge the laptop through that port and of course you can attach data devices but this is not a Thunderbolt port nor is this a USB 4 port so if you are looking at a docking station, make sure you get one that's for USB Type-C devices and not Thunderbolt. Here you've got a headphone microphone jack. And then on the other side here, you have your Microsoft magnetic uh, port, which is mostly used for the uh, built-in, or the included, I should say, power adapter. And that will attach here to the side. So you can attach over USB-C or through the power adapter here. What's nice about the power adapter is that it connects magnetically and should a child or animal uh, nudge the cable here, it just pops right out without taking the laptop with it. So it's that MagSafe thing that we've seen on Apple computers and also on prior Surface devices. Now it has a 720p webcam on board. As you can see, it's nothing spectacular from a resolution perspective, but the color looks okay on it. And that of course is located right here at the top. It doesn't have any kind of shutter mechanism on it though, so you will have to find some tape to cover up that camera if you want to block it. Now the battery life on this is not spectacular. You're looking at probably about six or seven hours if you're doing basic work like word processing, web browsing, and email, and keeping the display brightness down a bit. At its full brightness, it runs at around 350 nits, which of course will eat into that battery more significantly. And if you are doing more significant tasks on it, like video editing or something that's going to hit that processor more, that will also impact your overall battery life. And now we're at the point of the video where we look at who this laptop is for. Because if you're somebody who looks at specifications versus price, you can certainly get a much higher spec laptop for less money. But as we always like to remind people, that laptop will be much larger, heavier, noisier, maybe less battery life, uh, not as nice of a display. And what you're paying for here is the industrial design work that went into making this thing portable and convenient. And I think for a lot of tech people, this is not something they'll find attractive. But for people that like a compact 12-inch device that is fully functional, I think they'll get a lot of value out of it because it is a very high-quality piece of hardware. As you'll see in a few minutes, it performs very well, and it adds a layer of convenience for people that are on the go. Uh, when I did that live stream the other day, I heard from a friend of mine who's an executive who just ordered this from his company uh, to replace a Surface tablet that was not as convenient for him, and he has to choose between a number of Microsoft devices. So he's very excited to get his hands on this because it will, uh, for him, work much better. And for me, this has been essentially my daily driver Windows work laptop for the last year, the prior edition of this. Now, I do a lot of my work on Macs, but I do have some tasks that are Windows only, including my amateur radio stuff. And my Surface Laptop Go is my go-to because it is functional and portable. And for me, that is the value proposition. So I think everyone's perspectives are different. The nice thing about the Windows PC world is that there are a ton of choices at a ton of different price points. And you can often find yourself a gaming laptop with a GPU at around what you would pay for this one. So really it's a matter of what your needs are and whether or not the product aligns with that. And that's where I'm coming from on this review. I really like 12 inch laptops. I have mourned the loss of the Mac 12 inch MacBook uh, because that was a very convenient machine for me. Even though it performed pretty lousy towards the end of its life, it was something that added a lot of convenience and this laptop has largely filled that void in my life. All right, with all that out of the way, let's take a look now and see how this performs. We'll begin with some of the basics here, some web browsing, and we'll visit the nasa.gov homepage and see how everything uh, comes to life here. And as you can see, it renders everything very quickly, no real lag or anything else like that. We can use the touch display to navigate or, of course, the trackpad. Uh, this does have Wi-Fi 6 on board, which was not on the prior edition of this laptop and the Wi-Fi performs quite well. In fact, we were pushing down about 700 megabits per second off of my Wi-Fi 6 access point in the ceiling a little bit earlier. And as expected, media playback on this device does just fine. These Intel chips are quite good at video decoding. And as you can see here, we're running a 1080p 60 frames per second YouTube video and not experiencing any dropped frames. So if you're looking to do Netflix and Disney Plus and all the other streaming services, this will do just fine for that. 
And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test running in Google Chrome, we got a score of 189. That puts this one above the prior generation of the Surface Laptop Go and in line with other 11th generation Intel processors that we've looked at. Now, of course, this being a Microsoft laptop, it runs Microsoft Office applications quite well. Uh, this is Microsoft Word running here. It seems pretty zippy to me. Uh, PowerPoint and Excel and everything else seems to be running nicely on it as well. So if you are a Microsoft shop like my friend is, I think you will not have any performance issues with that. You can also get by with some light video editing on this too. The new Intel chip on this one, I think will make a big difference for video editing over the prior edition of this laptop. That said, I would stick to 1080p projects and not expect a lot because you only have eight gigs of RAM uh, at the max that you can get this machine equipped with. So it's really not suited for high level production, but if you have to stitch together a few videos for your boss, I think it will do fine at that. So let's move on now to gaming and the addition of the Iris XE graphics on this new version of the laptop makes a huge difference. This is Red Dead Redemption 2. We're running this at 720p lowest settings and we were getting between 25 and 30 frames per second. You'd see that 30 frames per second rate when you're in big open areas like this one and you'll see probably in the high 20s when you've got characters and structures and whatnot that you're interacting with like you see here. But overall, the game is very playable and this is running natively or locally on the computer and not being streamed from someplace else. So that was a nice surprise out of a little compact laptop like this. We also booted up No Man's Sky, one of my favorite games. And this one was running uh, anywhere between 60 frames per second when you're out in space or very close to 60, but mostly 30 to 45 frames per second, especially when you are roaming around on a planet's surface. And I'll skip ahead to uh, doing just that here. And that was about what we've experienced out of some of these other 11th generation Intel chips uh, running with the XE graphics. And this was also 720p at the lowest settings. Uh, there was a couple of lag hits that you saw there. I think that might just be due to the fact that we were running this off of a USB 3 hard drive. So if you have uh, games installed natively, they'll probably do a little better. And the last one here is The Witcher 3, also 720p lowest settings. And this one was doing pretty good also, above 40 frames per second most of the time, average about 45 or so. The game played great and looked great as well. So I think if you are uh, looking to play some casual games on this thing, if you've got a Game Pass account, for example, I think you'll be surprised by what is actually runnable on the machine itself. And of course, it does very well with game streaming as well uh, through the Wi-Fi 6. So not a bad uh, choice here for casual gamers who maybe want to play a game or two when they're done with their work. And on the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test, we got a score of 1,373. That is significantly better than the 470 that we got on the original version of this laptop. And as you can see here, the Laptop Go 2 performs quite well against a recent Ryzen-based laptop we looked at a week or two ago. So I think from the standpoint, again, for casual gaming, this is going to do very well, much better than the prior edition will. And on the 3D Mark stress test, we got a score of 96%. 97% is a passing grade on that test. That indicates that we're right at the threshold where you might see some thermal throttling going on, but it is able to pretty effectively keep the uh, heat at bay. It does get a little warm to the touch at the bottom, not alarmingly so, at least in my testing and I didn't find any real performance issues that I could see running the games on it earlier. Uh, this does have a fan, of course, which you will hear, but it's a lot quieter than the prior edition of the laptop. And just know when you first get this thing, that fan's gonna be running a bit because there are a ton of updates that it's going to download even after you get Windows running on it. So just be prepared to hear that fan for a little bit after it's done with all that updating it'll run quiet most of the time. And if you're using the web or just doing some Microsoft Word work on it, it'll remain pretty quiet throughout and a lot quieter than the prior edition. All right, one last thing to check out and that is its Linux compatibility. We always like to boot up Ubuntu to see how things work and it works quite well on this Microsoft laptop. In fact, you get both logos together when you boot up Ubuntu on it. Uh, the overall performance on the Linux side was quite good. Uh, so the display was recognized properly. The touchscreen is working here, as you can see. Audio, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, the trackpad, the keyboard, 
Uh, all of the major functions here were detected and operated quite well at a nice level of performance. So you could uh, dual boot Windows and Linux on this Microsoft laptop and get a great experience for both operating systems. So altogether, I am very pleased with what Microsoft has put together for this second iteration of the Surface Laptop Go. My only gripe is the lack of a backlit keyboard, but beyond that, it's a very nice improvement over the prior one with better graphics performance and a quieter fan. And I think if you are looking for a 12-inch Windows laptop, this is definitely one to consider. It is an exceptionally nice piece of hardware that I think is reasonably priced for what it is. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Brian Parker, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Baby Metal Fox God, Tom Albrecht, Amda Brown, Matt Zagaya, and Tech Time with Eric. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.